multiplication of fractions. The first thing you should do is simplify on the diagonals, dividing out common factors. This is often known as canceling. Then you're going to multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and reduce. Let's look at an example. I'm going to multiply negative 3 eighths times negative 5 twelfths. First of all, for the signs, I would get in a habit of either doing them at the beginning of the problem or at the end. You just don't want to forget about them. We're multiplying with two negatives. That's an even number of negatives, so it will give us a positive answer. So I know my answer is positive. I'm going to ignore the signs. My first step is to simplify on the diagonals, dividing out common factors. So I check my diagonals. In this direction, for 3 and 12, they have a common factor of 3. So I can divide both of these by 3. 3 will go into 3 one time, and 3 will go into 12 four times. Then I check my other diagonal, 8 and 5. These have nothing in common. 5 is a prime, and it doesn't go into 8, so there's nothing in common. Uh, so my step 2 is multiply numerators. So I'm using my new numerators. So I have 1 times 5 is 5 and multiply my denominators. 8 times 4 is 32. That was my step 3. And then see if it will reduce. Uh, 5 is prime. It does not go into 32. So you are finished. And we did our signs at the beginning. Let's look at another example. Negative 2 thirds times 6. The first thing that I would do is make them both look like a fraction. And we can do that by writing the 6 as 6 over 1. Now we'll go with our rules. Uh, first of all, for our signs, we only have one negative. That's an odd number of negatives. So we will get a negative answer. And then we can try to simplify on the diagonals. We'll check on this diagonal. Uh, 2 and 1, they only have a common factor of 1. We don't care about dividing by 1. That would not help us. It would give back the same thing. So we'll check the other diagonal. These two have a common factor of 3. So we can divide each by 3. 3 will go into 3 one time. And 3 into 6 will go 2 times. And now we will multiply across. So we'll multiply numerators. 2 times 2 is 4 and multiply denominators. 1 times 1 is 1. And we can simplify. Um, it's still going to be negative, but 4 divided by 1 gives us 4. Let's look at one more example. If you have several variables in a problem, you might like to just carry them over to the answer part, breaking them down into primes as you go. So we'll do that on this example. We'll go ahead and put our line and we don't have any negatives to deal with. And I have a B and A to the third. So I'm going to keep them in alphabetical order. So I'll do the A first. So I'm going to break it down to three copies of the A. And I have one B. And then for the denominator, I have A squared, which will be two A's. And B cubed will be three B's. And then I can divide out common factors. Uh, just remember they have to match up. So I can divide out this A and this A and one of the B's. And then we'll put the answer back together. On my numerator, I have left one A. And in the denominators, two B's, which would be B squared in exponential notation. Next, we'll look at division of fractions. Division just takes one more step than the multiplication problems. We're going to change a division problem to a multiplication. 
and invert the divisor. You have to do two changes together. So change it to multiplication and invert, which means flip over, the divisor. You may have been taught to multiply by the reciprocal. It means the same thing. And then you're going to follow the multiplication rules. To simplify on the diagonals, multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and reduce. Let's look at an example. 5 eighths divided by 2 thirds. Our first step is to change it from a division to a multiplication problem and invert the divisor. Make sure you're inverting the right piece. It's the one after the division symbol. So the first fraction stays the same. The divide becomes a multiplication and the two-thirds is going to flip over and be three halves. Now you can try to simplify on the diagonals. You cannot simplify until it is in a multiplication form. We'll check on this diagonal. Five and two, they have nothing in common. We'll check the other diagonal, eight and three, they have nothing in common. So there's not any simplifying we can do we will multiply numerators. 5 times 3 is 15. And multiply denominators. 8 times 2 is 16. And this is not going to reduce. When you get numbers that are consecutive numbers, uh, that means one right after the other, they are not going to reduce. Our next example is 7x divided by 14x over 3. The first thing I would do is make that 7x also look like a fraction. You can always do that by putting something over 1. Right Now we have a division, so we'll rewrite it as a multiplication. Your first fraction will stay the same. We're changing to multiplication, and we're going to invert our divisor. So now we'll have 3 over 14x. Now we have a multiplication form. We can try to simplify on the diagonals. On this diagonal, you can work first with the numbers. Um, for 7 and 14, they have a common factor of 7, so you can divide by 7. 7 goes into 7 one time, and into 14 it will go two times. If you want to take the variables out here, you can. x and x match up. They're going to divide out. I'm going to leave them just so you can see another way to deal with them, but it would be fine to divide them out here. On the other diagonal, 3 and 1 only have 1 in common, and it doesn't help us to divide out 1. It still leaves the same thing. So we'll multiply across. 1x times 3 would give us 3x, and 1 times 2x gives us 2x. Notice we still have the x's that match up, so we could divide them here. So we could have canceled them here, or you can cancel them in the answer. And then our final answer will be 3 halves. Uh, there are no common factors to reduce. Normally we will leave an improper fraction. Just take out all the common factors.